In this video, we are going to discuss assignment problems, what they mean, types of assignment problems, methods for solving assignment problems, and assignment problem objectives. Assignment problems arise in a variety of decision-making situations. Typically, assignment problems involve in assigning jobs to machines or operators, agents to tasks, salespersons to tertiaries, and contracts to bidders, and so on. The distinguishing feature of assignment problem is that it's a one-to-one -one assignment, meaning an operator is assigned to one and only one machine, an agent is assigned to one task, one salesperson is assigned to one territory, etc. In assigning problems, the decision maker looks for a set of assignments that will optimize the sales objective, such as minimizing cost, minimizing processing time, maximizing profit or maximizing deliverability, and so on. If we consider the undermentioned transportation tableau of a transportation problem, it contains origins at the left and their supplies at the right, and also destinations at the top and their demands at the bottom. If we remove the supplies at the right and the demands at the bottom, and if we replace the origins by performer and the destination by the task, we will be left with a 4x4 matrix consisting performers at the left and tasks at the top. The resulting matrix is the same as the model of assignment problems. The assignment problem model is considered as a special case of transportation problem model in which the assignment represents the destination and the workers receiving the assignment represents the source. All supplies and demands equal to one. By the way, it's not always the case to set performers at the left hand side of each row and the task at the top of each column. Rather, it can switch them or replace them by other entities like salespersons at the left of each row and sales territories at the top of each column, or bidders at the left of each row and contracts at the top of each column, and so forth. Next, let's first two types of assignment problems. Assignment problems are two types, that is, balanced assignment problem and unbalanced assignment problem. If the number of rows and the number of columns in a given assignment problem are equal, the problem is called balanced assignment problem. In case of transportation problem, the problems are categorized as balanced and unbalanced just by comparing the total demand and the total supply. But assignment problem models do not contain demands and supplies. Hence, these problems are differentiated as balanced or unbalanced just by counting the total number of rows and the total number of columns. If the number of rows equal to the number of columns, the assignment problem is called balanced assignment problem. If not, it's called unbalanced assignment problem. Assignment problems are solved by taking into consideration of balanced assignment problem model. If the model is not balanced, you have to balance it by adding a dummy row or a dummy column with zero entries. Besides these two categories, assignment problems might be restricted type. Restricted assignment problems can be either balanced or unbalanced. A special feature of such problems is that they are associated with some restrictions like not assigning performers to jobs because of health problem or lack of skill, not considering salesperson for some territories because of language barriers, and so on. We will illustrate on each of these problem types when we are solving problems. Methods for solving assignment problems. Assignment problems can be solved by either enumeration method, simplex method, or Hungarian method, but the most commonly used method is the Hungarian method. Hungarian method is a procedure that involves subtracting and adding an appropriate value in a matrix to yield an optimal solution. It's a three-step procedure, each with their own sub-steps. As we discussed above, assignment problems are based on balanced models. Thus, before proceeding to the steps of Hungarian method, we have to make sure that whether the model is balanced or not. If the model is not balanced, we have to balance it by adding a dummy row or a dummy column with zero entries. So let's dive into the steps of Hungarian method. The first step is row and column reduction, and also called matrix reduction, meaning reduce the initial matrix by subtracting the smallest element in each row from every element in that particular row. Then, by using the row reduced matrix, subtract the smallest element in each column from every element in that column. Let's follow step-by-step -step approach for clarifying this step. First, Identify the minimum value of each row, and then subtract this minimum value from each element in that particular row. For example, in the assignment model given below, 
The real reduction can be calculated as follows. In the given model, the rows stand for operators performing the task, and the columns stand for the tasks to be performed. The entries in the matrix are the time needed in hour to complete the tasks. Since we have four rows and four columns in the given matrix, the model is balanced, so we can directly proceed to row reduction. The minimum value in row 1 is 2. The minimum of row 3 is also 2. Row 3 minimum is 4, and row 4 minimum is 3. Let's copy a blank table to this right-hand side in order to keep the differences. In subtracting row minimum from each element in row 1, 3 minus 3 is equal to 1, 2 minus 2 is equal to 0, 7 minus 2 is equal to 5, and 6 minus 2 is equal to 4. The row reduction for other three rows can be calculated as follows. In row 2, 7 minus 2 is equal to 5, 5 minus 2 is equal to 3, 2 minus 2 is equal to 0, and 3 minus 2 is equal to 1. In row 3, 4 minus 4 is equal to 0, 8 minus 4 is equal to 4, 6 minus 4 is equal to 2, and 7 minus 4 is equal to 3. In row 4, 3 minus 3 is equal to 0, 5 minus 3 is equal to 2, 4 minus 3 is equal to 1, and 5 minus 3 is equal to 2. So this is the row radius matrix, which we will use it for column and reduction. Following real reduction, identify the minimum value in each column of the row radius matrix and subtract this value from each element in that column. Bear in mind, column and reduction is a continuation of row reduction, meaning the matrix we use for column and reduction calculation is real reduced matrix, but not the original matrix. Thus, from the row reduced matrix, let's identify the column minimum. The minimum value in first column is zero. Second column minimum is also zero. Again, third column minimum is zero. And the fourth column minimum is one. Again, let's copy this blank table to the right hand side in order to fit column and radius entries. Column one, column two, and column three elements will not be changed because their column minimum is zero. And subtracting zero from any other elements gives the elements is set. So let's copy these elements as they are. When we come to column four, four minus one is equal to three, one minus one is equal to zero, three minus one is equal to two, and two minus one is equal to one. The row and column and reduction step is commonly referred to as phase one of assignment problem, and the subsequent two steps are considered as phase two of assignment problem. Step two, row scanning and column scanning, meaning find the minimum number of straight lines that must be drawn through rows and columns of the current matrix, that's the radius matrix, so that all the zeros in the matrix will be covered. In the reduced matrix, Examine the row successively, and whenever a row with single zero is found, enclose that zero with rectangle or any other mark, and eliminate the column containing that zero by drawing a vertical line. If the given row contains no zero or more than one zero, we have to skip that row and continue the scanning on other rows. In our radius matrix, row one contains only one zero, that is a zero under column two, so we will enclose this zero by rectangle and we will eliminate column and two by drawing a line through it. The question might be raised that why we enclose the zero by rectangle and why we eliminate a column and by drawing a vertical line. The reason is simple. When we enclose a zero by rectangle, we indicate that task two is temporarily assigned to operator one. It's a temporary assignment because it might be changed in the next steps of iteration. When we eliminate a column and by drawing a line, we indicate that task two is already assigned and his no further assignment for this task is needed. Because as I mentioned above, the typical feature of assignment problem is a one-to-one -one assignment. When we move down to row two, it contains two zeros. That are the zeros under column three and column four. So I have to skip this row because it contains more than one zero. Meaning at this stage, we are undecisive to assign either task three or task four to operator two because both of them are qualified to be assigned. In row three, we have only one zero, so we will enclose this zero by the rectangle and we will eliminate column and one by drawing a line through it. We don't have any zero in row four because the zero under column and one is already deleted and the other undeleted elements are different from zero. So we will also skip this row. At this stage, we complete the row scanning and his, we will continue to column and scanning. Following row scanning, examine each unlined column successively, and whenever you find a column with single zero, 
enclose that zero with rectangle and eliminate the row containing that zero by drawing a line through it. We have to skip column one and column two because they are already deleted. Column three contain only one zero, that's the zero in row two. Thus, we will enclose this row by rectangle and eliminate row two by drawing a line through it. We don't have any zero in column four because the zero in row two is already deleted and the other elements are different from zero. At this point, all the zeros in the matrix are covered by lines. In other words, we complete the row and column scanning procedure. The other requirement for this step two is that if the minimum number of straight lines is the same as the number of rows or equivalent three columns, the solution is optimal, since an optimal assignment can be made. If the minimum number of straight lines drawn to cover the zeros is less than the number of rows, proceed to step three. In the matrix, the number of rows is four, and the number of straight lines drawn to cover the zeros is three. Since the minimum number of straight lines is less than the number of rows, the solution is not optimal, and hence we will continue to step three. That's identify the smallest unlined element, subtract this smallest element from every unlined element, and add it to every element at the intersection of two lines. Elements covered by a single line will remain the same. Again, let's copy this blank table to the right hand side in order to deal with the new entries. First, let's copy the elements that are covered by single line because no addition or subtraction will be carried out on these numbers. In row one, one under column one and zero under column two are covered by single line, so they will copy as they are. In row two, zeros under column three and column four are covered by single horizontal line. Again, we will copy them as they are. Elements under column one and column two of row three and row four are also covered by single vertical line, so they have to be copied as they are. From the unlined six elements, the smallest element is one. We have to subtract this one from each of the six unlined elements. So five minus one is equal to four, three minus one is equal to two, two minus one is equal to one, two minus one is equal to one, one minus one is equal to zero, and y minus one again is equal to zero. On the other hand, we have to add this one to each of the elements at the intersection of two straight lines. The horizontal and vertical lines intersect at two points, so we have to add one to each of these points. That's five plus one is equal to six, and three plus one is equal to four. Following this addition and subtraction of the smallest element, we have to return to step two, that's row and column and scanning step, in order to cover all the zeros by the minimum number of straight lines. In row one, we have only one zero, that's the zero under column two. So we will enclose this zero by the rectangle and we have to delete column two. Row two contains two zeros, so we will skip it. Row three contains one zero, that's the zero under column one. Hence we have to enclose this zero and eliminate column one by drawing a line through it. Row four contains two undeleted zeros, thus we will skip this row and we'll continue to column scanning. We will skip column one and column two because they are already deleted. Each column three and column four contains two zeros, so we couldn't choose either of the zeros and eliminate the rows containing these zeros. In other words, the row and column scanning can't help us to cover all zeros by straight line. Thus, an additional rule called diagonal rule has to be in place to find the optimal solution. So let's state what the diagonal rule says. Select zeros which are diagonally opposite to each other. Enclose these zeros with rectangle and delete the column containing these rows by drawing a line through them. Hence, if we select the zero at the intersection of row two and column three, the one diagonally opposite to it is the zero at the intersection of row four and column four. We can also choose the zero at the intersection of row four and column three, and its diagonally opposite zero is the one under column four of row two. In both cases, the optimal solution we will find is similar. For this particular case, let's choose the formal one. After enclosing the diagonally opposite zeros in rectangle, we will delete the column containing these zeros. Then we will continue to check whether the number of straight lines cover all the zeros are equal to the number of rows or not. Number of rows is equal to four, and number of straight lines is equal to four. Since the number of rows is equal to the number of straight lines, the solution is optimal. Therefore, the optimal assignment can be made. First, let's draw a table with three columns and six rows. Then let's designate the cells of the first row as operator, task, and time. Operator one is assigned to task two. 
and the time needed for this operator to complete the task is two hour. Operator two is assigned to task three. Operator two needs two hour to complete task three. Operator three is assigned to task one. Four hours are needed for operator three to complete task one. Operator four is assigned to task four. The time needed for operator four to complete task four is five hours. Thus, the total time needed to complete the task is 2 plus 2 plus 4 plus 5, which is equal to 13 hours. Finally, let's have a brief look about assignment problem objectives. Assignment problems have both maximization and minimization objectives. They help us to look for assignments that minimize the processing time, processing cost, distance traveled by performance in a workplace, or to maximize profits, customer satisfaction, workplace utilization efficiency, and so on. Hungarian method can directly be used for solving minimization problems, but in case of maximization problems, the problem has to be converted to minimization problem by calculating opportunity loss before starting to apply the steps of Hungarian method. Opportunity loss is the value of the lost chance or a potential profit that wasn't realized because a course of action was taken that didn't permit to obtain the profit. Opportunity loss is calculated by subtracting every element in each column from the largest element in that particular element. We will illustrate on both of these objectives when we will solve the problems in the upcoming videos. By this, I wrap up this part. Goodbye.